Okay, so there is a program called Advanced uh, IP Scanner, which is pretty good. What it'll do is it'll let you connect, it'll scan your um, your network and it'll, con it'll show you all the machines that you're you know having it that are connected and it, it's a very quick way of getting into anything that's shared. Now by default, if I remember rightly, um, so if you can see here, these folders, ROMs, uh, BIOS and configs are automatically shared over Samba on um, the Raspberry Pi. If there's not, what you do is um, you basically run the Raspberry Pi, you, you boot it up, uh, you hit start to get the big menu up, or you press whatever you do to get your menu up that lets you configure the joystick and that. There's an option to exit and go to uh, command prompt. And what you do there is you type in Pi, uh, is the username raspberry as the password and then type in sudo sudo space raspi dash config and that should get you a menu and in there you might have to cycle through all the options but there's one that turns samba shares on and it'll share those out i think it's on by default but that's why i didn't show you in detail but that's that's what you do so the gist of it is you go into configs and if i remember rightly yeah what we do is under configs, if you scroll down to, in this case, Mega Drive, and if you go to uh, this one here, is the one that it actually checks. So um, let's have a look. When you go into it, you're going to see something like this. Okay, so you're going to see all these things, a, a skeleton one that basically tells you what all the options do. And it's worth having a read. Okay, but the first thing you do is you right click on that file and you save it as a backup file. Okay, so you basically right click. And in this case, I went save as retro that uh, retro arch dash can fit that backup because no matter how badly you mess up, then you got this to, to go back to. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into this one. It'll be called there might be a number after this, but it's whatever the highest number is. So there's Pico Drive underscore Libretto twenty five, you know, thirty six, whichever one is there. You, uh, you know the the highest number. That's the last one you've used. So you go in there. So. In my case, I use a program called, if you're having problems seeing them, by the way, if you download Notepad++, it's a great way of going through them. So, what I do is basically go in here, and all literally all you got to do is go File, Save As, and then basically save it as RetroArch.cfg. And what that will mean is that when it starts up the next time, um, you will be able to, uh, you'll be able to, It'll instantly load your settings, okay? Now you can also do things like turn off buttons. I had to go in if you do a search if you're having problems with stuff like loading states coming on when you're trying to play a game. Uh, if you scroll down, there is uh, where's it gone here? Control F. Uh, yeah, there's one basic input save state. Uh, and anything, yeah, I basically have to switch all them off. This is, in these cases, if there's a number, it's, it's a button number, okay? So I set them to ones that don't exist or set them to null. Um, so you really want to watch out for the save state ones. Uh, like I said, I just by default, they were, it kept jumping save state slots and it was every time I tried to play the game and it, it didn't work too well. So um, you might need to do that. That's it. So basically, you save it as uh, retroarch.config, your file, save as retroarch.config. It replaces the default one. Next time you load your game, it has those settings. Now, what you can do as well is um, back up the use that for, that retroarch.config in other emulators. I have, I've tried it with the Master System one and the NES one, and it, it, it's not too bad. So, the gist of it is, back up the ones that are in there already, um, and then you know copy your new one in, and it still it, yeah it means it's configured for your joystick straight away. Uh, you can do other things like. Um, as regards like HDMI's, by the way, if you just open something Notepad, it's kind of hard to read. And if you go uh, Word Wrap, it's even harder. So I just found that um, using Notepad Plus Plus is a better way of doing it. But there's options to do a video and stuff like that there, so it's uh, it can be handy as well. So listen, I hope that helps. Um, I, like I said, there's better ways of doing it, but the Advanced IP Scanner is a good way of uh, going in and finding, especially since the, the IP address might change depending on how it's set up. So um, if you're not sure, you know, the best thing is, you know, some that, sometimes you can just go, you know, uh, forward slash, forward slash, Sega Pi, forward slash, and see all the shares, but, yeah, or whatever you've named yours, but like, I call mine Sega Pi, but well, yours will be called like Raspberry Pi or something. Um, and it'll let you in there and you can do that. One last thing, if you're having any weird problems at all with the Pi, um, what you do is, instead of turning it around so you get a big stream close up, uh, what you do is, one thing to try is get the, your power supply, 
and check the ampage on it. Now you're not gonna be able to see it here because it's tiny, tiny writing. Um, I think the minimum you can use is like 500 uh, mAh, uh, the milliamps, yeah. Um, but I found, I think one amp to two amps is okay. Uh, I think it, it's, it's just to do with, and this is a very vague description, but it's the gist of, you've got lots of, you've got the right voltage, but there's lots of little things on the, the Raspberry Pi and you're using the power supply to power them and the, the milliamps is kind of like the amount of electricity, if you like, you've got spare to supply them. And if there isn't enough electricity to go around, um, it won't be able to power everything at once and it will fail. So that might like, mean, oops, that might mean like the graphics car or the graphics chip mightn't have enough power going to it because it's had to send the power at like the USB ports or whatever. So just anyway, long story short, if it does anything weird, just look at that. Get the, the, the fanciest power supply you can and try that and see how you get on with. Uh, but again, check the amp, which it's like one amp or two amps. I think you can get them on eBay. But um, yeah, anyway, that might be some help. That's just what I'm doing right now with the Raspberry Pi. Again, hopefully it might help somebody out there. I'm going to include the links to the sites that it's on, and I'm going to go back to studying for my exam. So hopefully that goes okay. Thanks for watching, guys, as always, and I shall see you next time. Peace out.